It's July 16, 1945, and as the sun rises over the New Mexican desert, a group of scientists are huddled together inside a small bunker made of wood and dirt. This bunker is positioned 10,000 yards away from what would eventually become Ground Zero. And in a moment, these scientists will soon see how much their little boy has grown. This was the Trinity nuclear test, a major turning point in modern history as it displayed the true power of nuclear fission. The man who discovered this power was the one and only Enrico Fermi, and through his storied scientific background, he was able to discover nuclear fission, furthering human society, for reasons both good and bad, with the resulting use of nuclear energy. Fermi's work and talent gave him many titles, the godfather of the bomb, the architect of the nuclear age, but many gave him the name the Pope of Physics. Enrico Fermi was born on the 29th of September 1901 into a middle-class Italian family that heavily valued education. As he grew up, Fermi grew a close bond with his brother Giulio over their infatuation with science and their gifted intelligence. Fermi was first recognized for his intelligence around the age of 13 by one of his father's colleagues named Adolfo Emede, who would go on to take him under his wing and deem Fermi a prodigy. Unfortunately, however, Giulio had developed a throat abscess, likely due to a severe tonsil infection, and when he went into surgery, Giulio went into shock and died on the operating table. With this loss, Fermi started indulging himself more and more into the realm of physics with the support of his friends and family. Years later, Fermi, now out of high school, needed to consider his future college. School in Nordmali was one of Fermi's first choices for enrollment, and when he got accepted, he was quickly fast-tracked onto the doctoral program of the school and graduated in 1922, earning a professorship in the University of Rome shortly after. Due to Fermi's young age and immense prowess, he gained a lot of notoriety throughout the college. This allowed Fermi to get the budget to form the Via Pani Sperna Boys, a group of the best scientists at the University of Rome. By 1934, Fermi and his group had a mission. They wanted to see if they could expand the periodic table, which only went up to atomic number 92, uranium. To do this, they tried to abuse the rules of beta minus decay. Fermi had a theory that by doing so, he could add an extra two elements to the table, number 93 and 94. Hammering away at this experiment, finally, Fermi thought he saw some positive results. He saw two new atoms, which he thought to be 93 and 94. This success was instantly recognized across the globe, as Fermi earned a Nobel Peace Prize for his work. Instead of returning home after getting the award, Fermi and his family fled to the US shortly after the events of Kristallnacht, as, when Italy adopted the anti-Semitic policies of its ally, Nazi Germany, a crisis occurred, for Fermi's wife, Laura, was Jewish. Years later, now living in the US, Fermi receives the news. His experiment failed. But, Fermi didn't create two new elements he accidentally split an atom in two. This separation of atoms was called nuclear fission, and it would create a staggeringly large amount of energy. At this point, it was the 1940s, and the US sought to use this new power before Germany could use it against them. Scientists in Chicago got to work, and began work on the first nuclear reactor with the help of Enrico Fermi under a football stadium. These scientists made this reactor out of hundreds of pounds of graphite and uranium metal oxide. The reactor managed to go critical on December 2nd, 1942. This positive result allowed the US to go full steam ahead with the Manhattan Project, which would produce even more nuclear reactors for the purpose of creating weapons. In modern day, there are currently almost 1,000 reactors built, being built, or being considered across the globe. For civil, civil referring to militaristic uses, like weapons and submarines, and commercial purposes. In the US alone, these reactors have the ability to power over half of the homes in the country, and in total contribute to a fifth of the power in the country every single year. But if these reactors are so effective, why doesn't more of the world use them? Let's rewind a little, back to 1986. In northern Ukraine, near the city of Pripyat, a nuclear reactor named Chernobyl was going through a normal day of operations. Scientists of Chernobyl were operating safety tests on the reactor's turbines, when suddenly, coolant to the reactor began leaking. This explosion would result in the immediate evacuation of the area, the predicted deaths of more than 4,000 people, and the release of radioactive material into the atmosphere, which affected many Scandinavian countries nearby. 
Chernobyl is predicted to be habitable again in another 3 to 20,000 years. 35 years later, in Fukushima, a similar incident occurred, where the Fukushima power plant broke down due to the Tohoku earthquake and tsunami. This disaster was just as terrible as Chernobyl due to the radioactive material leaking into the water supply. And because of Japan's large seafood culture, this leak resulted in food and water being unsafe to consume across the country. Some of the radiation even made it to US shores. These two nuclear disasters resulted in the public view of nuclear power plants to be shifted into a negative light. Many wondered if nuclear energy was even safe to use, and although the scientific answer to that question is yes, another type of nuclear technology would beg to differ. Nuclear Weapons Many years before the creation of atomic bombs, more commonly called nuclear bombs or just nukes, Albert Einstein theorized in a letter to former President Franklin D. Roosevelt that nuclear fission would also lead to the construction of bombs. And it's conceivable, though much less certain, that extremely powerful bombs of this type may be thus constructed. As previously stated, these bombs were developed out of fear of German nuclear weapons, and that fear manifested in the Manhattan Project. The first test of nuclear weapons was on July 16, 1945, in a test named Trinity. The bomb designs used here would heavily influence those used in the bombing of Hiroshima. Hiroshima was a prime target for the United States as Hiroshima was home to a military base, was located in an urban area, which was important as it could potentially break the spirits of the Japanese, and, morbidly enough, was undamaged by prior bombings and was seen as a good way to test the bomb's power. A majority of scientists who worked on the bomb demanded for there to be a military demonstration or opportunity for the Japanese to surrender before dropping it. But the US dropped the bomb anyways, which was now called Little Boy. On August 6, 1945, a small US bomber plane by the name of Enola Gay was seen in Japanese airspace around 8 a.m. Japanese officials warned citizens to take shelter and evacuate Hiroshima, but many ignored this warning. The explosion, with the force of 15 kilotons of TNT, killed anywhere between 80,000 to 140,000 people instantly, and was seen from over 5 miles away. The shockwave shattered windows as far as 37 miles away from Ground Zero, and the resulting firestorm would travel an estimated 4.4 miles. Shortly after the dropping, black rain containing soot, ash, and radioactive material began to rain across Japan, even in areas unaffected by the bombing. Akiko Takakura is one of a small handful of survivors, named Hibukasha, of the bombing, and she states that many people on the street were killed almost instantly. The fingertips of those dead bodies caught fire, and the fire gradually spread over their entire bodies from their fingers. I was so shocked to know that fingers and bodies could be burned and formed like that. I just couldn't believe it. It was horrible. Only three days later, another bomb, named Fat Man, would be dropped on the Japanese city of Nagasaki, and had many similar end results to those of Hiroshima. Luckily, residents of Nagasaki, still shaken up by the losses of Hiroshima, quickly evacuated much of the city before it was too late resulting in less total deaths than in Hiroshima. The dropping of these bombs didn't just result in human death, but also resulted in the surrender of Japan during the Second World War. This wouldn't be the last time nukes took some sort of stranglehold on modern politics, as the fear these bombs brewed in world politics would result in the Cold War, Cuban Missile Crisis, and scares involving North Korean nukes. When Enrico Fermi discovered nuclear fission, he couldn't have foreseen the ways it would have been used. However, after Fermi saw the events in Hiroshima and Nagasaki, he questioned his faith in the power he pioneered, stating that, The history of science and technology has consistently taught us that scientific advances in basic understanding have sooner or later led to technical and industrial applications that have revolutionized our way of life. It seems to me improbable that this effort to get at the structure of matter should be an exception to this rule. What is less certain, and what we all fervently hope, is that man will soon grow sufficiently adult to make good use of the powers he acquires over nature. Fermi brings up a very important question. Have we grown adult enough to make good use of nuclear energy? Many people think not, and that stigma is supported by the role nuclear energy takes in all facets of life, especially politics. Others claim that without nuclear energy, we wouldn't be nearly as advanced technologically. Whatever the answer to that question may be, it's undeniable that nuclear energy has completely rewritten the way we think about global, political, and cultural threats. Its effects, both good and bad, have played a role in furthering human society. And none of this could have happened without the work of one Enrico Fermi almost 90 years ago. Music